In this section, we will understand the flow of genetic information in cells from DNA to mRNA to proteins through a process described as the cell flow dogma, which explains how genes dictate the sequence of mRNA, which is then specified to make a set of unique proteins. As you recall, DNA has the genetic code to form a protein. However, DNA is first read or transcribed into an mRNA molecule, which is translated to form a protein. Both prokaryotes and eukaryotes perform the same process of transcription with the only difference of the membrane-bound nucleus in eukaryotes. Transcription hence takes place within the nucleus of the eukaryotic, while in prokaryotic, transcription occurs in the cytoplasm of the cell. The first step of transcription, also called as initiation, it requires a DNA double helix to unwind in the region of mRNA synthesis. It starts at a promoter site and then moves along stream towards the genes that needs to be copied. Various enzymes and proteins involved in transcription bind at this promoter site. The messenger RNA is transcribed in only one direction. Transcription always proceeds on one strand called as the template strand. The mRNA product is identical to the complementary DNA strand with the exception of RNA strand containing uracil in place of the thiamine found in DNA. RNA polymerase is the enzyme that adds nucleotide in the direction of 5' prime to 3' prime sequence. Once the mRNA is transcribed, it is now ready to make multiple copies of the protein through a process called translation. Now the newly synthesized mRNA leaves the nucleus and moves towards the ribosome where it will be translated into a protein. In eukaryotic cells, there are some RNA processing which we will discuss in some upcoming slides. Translation requires mRNA template, ribosomes, tRNAs, and various other enzymes. The mechanism of protein synthesis can be divided into three stages, initiation, elongation, and then termination. In both prokaryotes and eukaryotes, translation begins when a tRNA with a sequence of three nucleotide called as anticodons, aligns to a three-letter sequence of nucleotide called as codon on the mRNA, which it recognizes. The tRNA brings a free amino acid to the other end of the tRNA molecule. The second tRNA molecule reads the next three nucleotide sequence on the mRNA and brings a second free amino acid. The amino acid start joining through a peptide bond as new tRNA keeps on bringing new amino acids to the extend polypeptide chain. Translation stops when a sequence of three nucleotides called as the stop codon is read on the mRNA fragment or molecules. Make sure to watch this animation. Here I have shown you the DNA sequence, its complementary mRNA sequence, and then the tRNA anticodons bringing along amino acid. As mentioned earlier in the prokaryotic cell, there is no membrane-bound nucleus, hence transcription and translation both occur in the cytoplasm. While in eukaryote, transcription takes place in the nucleus, 
the resulting mRNA leaves the nucleus through the nuclear pore into the cytoplasm where it looks for the ribosomes. There are three types of ribonucleic acid. Each has a role within central dogma. Messenger RNA brings the code from the DNA to the ribosome. Transfer RNA delivers the amino acid to the, to the ribosomes while the ribosomal RNA is involved in the assembly of the ribosome. One unique process that takes place only in eukaryotic cell is called as RNA processing. The, pro the purpose of this step is to prevent the RNA from being degraded within the cytoplasm of the cell's enzyme. Three main features of this process are listed here. A special nucleotide called the cap is added to the 5' prime end of the mRNA while on the 3' prime end a tail is added of numerous adenosine molecules called as the AAAA. The, first, the third step is the removal of the section called as the introns that do not code for functional proteins. The exons are region that carry the code, hence through splicing, introns are removed and the mature mRNA only contains the genetic codes. The reason for this is that the DNA sequence, such as humans, only has 2% genome that codes for information. The remaining 98% of the DNA sequence in our cells has another function which is still being explored. To summarize what we've understood so far, transcription generated messenger RNA, which only has the sequence of A, C, G, and U, the four nucleotides. Proteins, however, are made up of 20 amino acids. Therefore, you would need 20 letters to code for them. But since there are only four nucleotides, hence it has been found that each amino acid is coded by three nucleotide sequence called as the codon. The codons are present on mRNA. The relationship between the codon and its amino acid is called as the genetic code. If only four nucleotide codes for four amino acids, how will they code for the other 16? If two nucleotides pair to form combinations to code for amino acid, then there would be likely uh, 16 possibilities. Again, how will the remaining amino acids get coded? As there are 64 codons possible with the combination of three nucleotide sequence, hence the genetic code is composed of three nucleotides. There is only one start code, which is uh, AUG, and three stop codons. Some amino acids have four different frames to code for them. Others may have two sequences of codon dictating the amino acids. The 64 codons constitute all genetic variation found in all the living cells. Quite amazing. For a cell to function properly at the proper time, this process of turning on or off a gene to produce mRNA and protein is called gene expression. The regulation of gene expression can occur at many stages of the central Shown in the image here, RNA processing, transcription, and translation. Proteins are expressed only when they are needed. In our somatic cells, all the DNA sequences are present. However, some cells differentiate into blood cell, some bone cells, some nerve cells. Sequence are selectively expressed in the cell. In late 1970s, it was observed that different proteins can be formed from one gene with different combination of exons uh, performed during RNA processing. 
Sometimes this results in mistakes that can produce a non-functional protein.